In this episode we are going to display product options that we created in the previous episode. We are going to style those options using Tailwind so that they look nice and not just be vanilla radio buttons. Also we are going to update the directors and Tailwind CSS to the latest versions. I don't want to go into much detail on how you can update your directest version. We did that a couple of times throughout the series. So check out the first three episodes of this series to see how you can update uh, the directors to the latest version. Currently I'm using directors 9.5.0. This is the latest version as of recording of this video. Of course, depending on when you're viewing this video, you're going to update it to the version that is the latest at that time. While creating this series, Tailwind has also got a major upgrade. It's currently in version 3.0.18 as of recording of this video. So we are going to update it now. It will be very quick. So if you go to your app package JSON, not API package JSON, but app package JSON, you can see that currently we are using version 2.2.4. Uh, we are going to make this to be 3.0.18. 18. Save this. Uh, then of course you need to go to your terminal. I'm going to quit out of this and you just do npm install. Okay. So once this is done and this is going to be done very fast, uh, you can run your application again. You do npm run dev. And once you run it, uh, you can see that you have some warnings right here. So the first warning says the purge content options have changed in Tailwind CSS 3.0. Update your configuration file to elimin eliminate this warning. So what that means is we just need to go to our code editor and here in our Tailwind config.js file, instead of purge, you would just say content. For dark mode, we just want to set this up to be media. And uh, I think that's about it. If I save this, we go again to our terminal, quit out of it, run it again. And now we should not be getting those warnings anymore. So that's it. We are updated Tailwind to the version 3.0.18. Okay, so now before we begin, we just want to go to our directors administration. Uh, I want to go to products. And for super duper head, I'm going to allow this to show sizes and to add all of the existing sizes. And for the colors, I'm going to also enable them and show all of the available sizes here. Okay, great. For the t-shirt, I want to enable only sizes and I want to enable all of them. So I'm just going to so this is already set up, at least for me, you can check your administration and I'm going to disable colors. So save this and for the mugs, I'm just going to add only colors here. As you can see, there already have been added. I just want to add a red color also save this. And of course, check your permissions roles and permissions, you go to public, as you can see, for product colors, product sizes, uh, pr product colors and product sizes, pivot tables, we don't have access to those. So you would need to give them access. Okay, save this and actually you don't need to save anything. And we are ready to display those options that we did in the previous episode and display them here somewhere when somebody clicks on super duper head, for example, we want to display those options and allow users to click on them uh, to choose which color they want, which size they want and so on. Okay, so now before we begin, we need to of course update our product query because we need some data that we added in the previous episode. So first of all, let's add available colors. So available colors, uh, then we do product colors ID. And for the colors, we want to get the ID, we want to get the color value. And also we want to get the color name. Okay, and then for available sizes, we want to get product sizes ID, we want to get the ID, we want to get the long title. And also we want to get 
the short title. Great. Also, what we want to get is what we want to get show colors and show sizes because we are going to use those booleans to figure out if we want to display colors or display sizes or display both on our products. So here we just do show colors and we do show sizes. Okay, great. Now, if we save this, go to our browser and click on very good mug, for example, uh, we open up our console, make this a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to refresh this page once to see what we get. So as you can see, we, we are getting uh, available colors. Great. Uh, also, we are getting available sizes. Actually, we are not getting them. We are just getting an empty array. And we're also getting show colors true and show sizes false. So for this product, this very good mug, uh, we are going to be showing colors, but we are not going to be showing sizes. So let's now display those colors and allow users to pick them. So now on our Slack.js X page, what we want to do is we want to just say products, products, and then we want to say available colors. We want to map through them, of course, and then our variable is going to be called color. And in here, first of all, I just want to add a div and that div is going to have a key of color pro product colors ID dot ID. This is going to be our key. Then in here, I just want to open up a label, add a class name to it. And then I want to add an input field, which is going to be a radio button. Uh, the value of it is going to be the ID of a color. And the name is going to be colors. We need the same name for every input field, uh, for every input radio button, uh, because of course, uh, when somebody clicks on one, we want to unclick the other. And that's what radio buttons do. And the next thing we just want to display the name of our of our color. So color product colors ID color name. Let's see if this works. And as you can see, we can now choose the colors that we want. So blue, green, red. However, as you can see, this doesn't look very nice. So let's style it a little bit. I'm just going to paste in some code and then we are going to go through it uh, to see how I imagined our users are going to be picking the colors. So instead of doing this, I'm just going to remove what we did right here. And I'm just going to paste in a bit more code to make our colors a bit more nicer. So as you can see, I added, added a div, it says choose a color, uh, then we put uh, a div with the class name flex. So this is going to be a flex box. And in it, we display our colors. Now this is all nice. But uh, the real power of tailwind comes right here. But let's first of all, see how this looks. So if I save this, go to our browser, as you can see, now we have choose color, and we have these options right here that we can choose. What I don't like right here, and I don't know why this is going on, is that we have very good mug and choose color in the same li line. And that kind of sucks. So let's see what's the problem here. Oh, I see what's going on. Actually, we needed to put all of that code inside of this div with the class name of MT2 and MDML4. So I'm just going to copy all of this and just put it below the product name. So now this should look much nicer. If we go to our browser, now this looks a little bit nicer. So you have choose color. If you click on any of those, as you can see, we get a ring around them to show which color has been chosen. Now let's look at the code a little bit. So this is all tailwind, more or less. So now we are mapping through our colors. First of all, we are defining a div like we did before. Then in the label, uh, we are adding inline flex item center cursor cursor pointer so that we get that pointer cursor when somebody uh, goes over our colors. Then we have this input radio, which we already created. However, we added some class names to it. Most importantly, so we probably don't need this. 
this has been left from something else. Uh, the position of it is absolute, the opacity is zero, the height is zero, the width is zero, and this is a pier, and I'm going to explain this a bit later. Uh, so what we are doing effectively here is we are hiding this input box. And instead of that input box, we are displaying this span right here. Now this pan uh, has a width of eight, height of eight, and now we get to this. So it says peer checked. Uh, what peer is, is actually the siblings of elements that you have inside of other elements. So span and input are siblings. That's, we, that's why we added the peer right here. So when somebody clicks on this input, uh, and when that input is checked, then this is going to happen. We are going to get a shadow. Now this is an arbitrary value. So since Tailwind doesn't come with the shadow that I like, uh, I added my own shadow. And to do that with Tailwind, you just do zero. And then instead of a space, you would do a underscore. And I said zero, zero, and then I want the width of my shadow to be two pixels and I want it to be some grayish color. And then I added rounded to Excel. The, this gives our colors that circular look. And then I added the margin, border white and border is two. I added the border so that we, uh, when we click on this, we get some spacing be, uh, behind, let me just make this bigger. We get the spacing between this gray ring and the actual color. So it looks like this. And that is how you create a custom radio button because you don't want to use that vanilla radio button. Uh, this conveys information of what the user is choosing in a much, much nicer way. So if we click this, you get those rings and you know which color you selected. Great. Now let's do, let's do sizes. Now for the sizes, we do pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to paste in some code. Also, we get the div. Uh, this should not be choose a color, but choose a size. We get a div and then we map through available sizes. Uh, most of the code is pretty much the same as for the colors, except uh, we are actually displaying the short title inside of our span, uh, but in colors we are not displaying anything inside of a span. And we have some different styles when somebody clicks on our input. So peer checked is has background of black. Uh, and text of white and also the border of black. When somebody uh, clicks on this, we are going to get a black box with the white text inside it. Let me just show you how this looks. If I save this, go to our browser. Of course, we don't get anything here. And why do we have this choose size again uh, in the wrong place? Did I screw this up again? I probably did. Of course I did. Okay. Let me just copy this and paste this here. And let me just see. Okay, so now we have two size. Of course, we don't have any sizes for the mugs, but we have sizes for t-shirts. So if we go here and now you can choose a color for your t-shirt, but you can also choose a size, right? So if you click on any one of those, you can choose a size. Now, uh, the thing is uh, you can, already see some bugs going on right here. If you go to products and click on a t-shirt, so t-shirt actually has uh, only sizes, but it doesn't have, have colors. We are seeing colors because if I click here on enabled, this is not removed, right? Because the only thing that this toggle does is just hide or show this field but that is not going to be a problem for us. We don't need to remove this by hand. Uh, what we can do is we can just go to our code editor and for the sizes, uh, we just put an if statement right here, which is going to say something like product that show sizes and end. So what this does, it says if the sizes are enabled on that product, then display this right here. So I'm just going to open up this and paste it in, 
save it and let's check it out let's refresh this page so we are still getting colors and sizes right here because we didn't do the same thing for colors right we only conditionally display sizes but not the colors so let's do the same thing for colors also so just open up a condition here and say product show colors and then add the colors in here great now if i save this go to the browser we only get sizes for our t-shirt uh, if we go to super duper hat here we have sizes and colors right and for our mug we should get just the colors and this is how you display your product options uh, on your front end in Next.js. Okay, so this has been it for this video. Remember, everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.